So welcome to MIPIM UK, which is now established as the biggest single gathering uh, in the UK property marketplace. Uh, we were delighted when uh, more than 4,000 people attended the inaugural MIPIM UK last year, and we are equally pleased to continue that success in 2015 uh, with 4,000 people due to attend again. Uh, MIPIM, UK, MIPIM UK ticks uh, the box for so many people. The 300 investors, including some of the world's biggest sovereign fu funds <coughs> who are here, have pressed us to create a big property show in London. The 100 blue chip occupiers who will be attending our occupier summit. The hundreds of people drowned to our tech stream, waiting to learn from the rapid growth of the prop tech world. The 35 cities and towns represented at MIPIM UK keen to meet developers and advisors as they press ahead with initiatives like the Northern Powerhouse. And of course, everyone wants to participate in our stellar conference program, which on Friday is headlined by the new Reba gold medalist, Zaha Hadid. Above all, MIPIM UK this year has a powerful fusion of the private and public sectors, with the recession now long behind us and the economy and property market strong, the government this month proclaimed themselves as the builders. MIPIM UK will help facilitate the dramatic program, bringing together the key figures in government and property from across Britain over three days of intense discussion, networking, and debate. And who better to launch that program than the Right Honorable Lord Maud of Ocean, Minister of State for Trade and Industry, he will be launching the second MIPIM UK with this message from the government. Thank well, Julien, thank you very much indeed for that, and good morning to you all. It's great to be here, at, uh, and I want to thank you all at the, the beginning to thank you all for coming and attending MIPIM UK and, and extending a very warm welcome to all of our visitors from overseas. This is, I understand, the second MIPIM UK. It aims to create partnerships between British organizations and authorities and overseas investors. Uh, MIPIM uh, normally happens every year, I'm told, in Cannes. Obviously, Olympia is at least as glamorous as Cannes. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful for the red carpet treatment uh, that uh, MIPIM has rolled out here and the croissants are just as good as well. Uh, the strong attendance at today's event is evidence of growing global confidence in Britain's economy and in our international reputation for innovation, renewal, and progress. I want to take the opportunity here today to thank investors for their investment to date, to outline some of the reasons why confidence in Britain is very well founded, and to urge you to continue to invest in all regions right across Britain. There's a very positive outlook for the British economy. Conditions are improving. We're the fastest growing economy in the West. More people are at work, in work today in Britain than at any time in our history. Global optimism and confidence in Britain is returning. And it's demonstrated by increased foreign investment right across all regions of Britain. According to the Financial Times and uh, uh, Ernst & Young, we remain the most attractive market in Europe for inward investment. And we are, again, the number one destination for foreign direct investment in Europe, worldwide only behind the United States and China. According to the World Bank, this is the easiest place to do business uh, in uh, uh, the EU and in the G8, according to uh, the World Bank. I always say Britain is the best place in the world to do business in and from, and I'll say a little more about the from uh, in a while. UK inward FDI stock, the total amount of foreign direct investment in Britain, is estimated last year to have passed the one trillion level, uh, and that's an extraordinary milestone. And we're bucking the global trend. Uh, last year, uh, the preliminary OECD estimates suggest that we achieved a 50% uplift 
in foreign direct investment inflows in a year when the global value of FDI fell by 11%. We're leading in the global innovation rankings. Innovative companies here can bank on a range of initiatives which give strong support to uh, innovation. The catapults, the sector catapults we set up during the last uh, five years, which give uh, uh, a base for innovative and for bringing innovation to the marketplace. The patent box, which gives a highly advantageous uh, tax regime uh, for new uh, uh, products and, and services. Uh, and of course, uh, our world leading uh, universities. So it's successful, but we're not remotely complacent. We are not resting on our laurels. We know that there's much more that can be done and must be done if we are to continue to succeed because we face intense competition. Everywhere I go around the world, I meet governments uh, that are hungry for investment, that are hungry for the jobs and the prosperity that inward investment brings. And we have to be competitive. We have to continue to show that Britain is the destination of choice for inward investment flows. We need to improve our productivity and strengthen our growth. We need to show that the whole of Britain benefits. We need to make this emphatically and without, dis without uh, dispute the most open, welcoming, and business-friendly country in the world. And to make this happen, we're continuing to cut red tape and bureaucracy and streamline decision-taking. We are providing access to a highly skilled and increasingly flexible workforce and offer a visa system that provides a warm welcome for skilled workers, for students, entrepreneurs, and investors. And our corporation tax rate, already the lowest in the G7 and joint lowest in the G20, set to fall further by a further 2% to 18% by 2020. So we are working tirelessly to fly the flag for British companies uh, in trade missions around the world. Last week I was in China uh, and uh, the Prime Minister uh, will continue to lead uh, the way in taking British companies uh, right across the world. I was with him uh, in late Ju July across ASEAN uh, his first outward visit uh, from uh, Britain since his election victory in May. As I say, we have four of the world's top ten universities. We have world-leading industry clusters, uh, from the Southwest Aerospace Industry to Silicon Fen in Cambridge, the automotive industries of the West Midlands and the agri-food cult cluster uh, in Yorkshire, together with Tech City and a host, a galaxy of other tech clusters right across uh, Britain. This is startup heaven. We're investing heavily in research and development. We're he investing heavily in infrastructure. We have the biggest investment program in railways since the 19th century and more to come. Construction is one of the largest sectors of the British economy. It contributes uh, almost 100 billion pounds to our economy in value added, it composed of nearly 300,000 businesses covering nearly 3 million jobs. And that's one in every 10 jobs in Britain in the construction world. Now, the property and regeneration industry now accounts for some 11% of our economy. And as we invest in regeneration and development across all regions of the UK, through the Northern Powerhouse and the Midlands Engine, there's potential for significant further sector growth. The pipeline managed by the Regeneration uh, Investment Organization includes more than 200 projects right across uh, the UK with gross development value uh, of uh, some 123 billion pounds. They'll help to create nearly 200,000 new homes and a quarter of a million new jobs, three quarters of a million new jobs. It's an exciting time to be investing in Britain. There are opportunities right across the country in every region, whether it's the Titanic Quarter in Belfast, the Liverpool Waters Project, or the London Royal Docks development. We're transforming Britain through regeneration and development projects, and we want foreign investment to support this. 
uh, and to take our experience and our expertise out from Britain into world markets. We are already regarded, recognized as a leader in developing ever more sustainable uh, and uh, smarter cities. And as emerging economies seek innovative solutions to uh, problems such as how to deliver major infrastructure projects, there's enormous potential for British-based companies to succeed. And if anyone needs persuading of that, take a visit to the Crossrail project, the biggest civil engineering project in Europe. I think the largest uh, underground railway project, uh, it's certainly in Britain, and uh, uh, weaving a way through the incredible complex uh, honeycomb of tunnels with which the ground underneath London is already uh, riddled. A successful project, successfully delivered, successfully executed, that will transform the infrastructure uh, of, of London. We can do this in Britain. We do it well. Uh, we can take that expertise out across the world where every country I visit is hungry for new infrastructure projects to be designed well, uh, led well, executed well, and contributing to the success of their economies. So Britain has long been a trading nation, and no country is better placed to offer a brilliant return on your investment than Britain. We have a time zone in which you can trade with Asia in the morning and America in the afternoon. We speak English, so the international language of business. For hundreds of years, we've sold our goods and services at local and overseas markets. I've heard MIPIM UK uh, described as a marketplace for investors, developers, and local authorities. And it's quite clear to me from the conversations I've had just in my short time here today uh, that this is a place where ideas, collaboration, and innovation can be forged to drive economic growth both in Britain and across the world. I've set out the government stall on our commitment to creating the most welcoming environment for business. And now I've got a request to make of you. Please use this event here today to learn about the existing and the upcoming opportunities, the development and regeneration opportunities in which Britain today abounds. Use it to build a legacy of business partnerships and collaborations. We will give you support every step of the way. Britain today is open for business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lord Maud. Uh, our next se uh, session will be starting at 10.45 uh, with titled The Rise of PRS, A Nation of Renters. Thank you very much.